Thank you for watching this presentation by Frederick County Business Task Force on Aging. The topic for today is caregiving. Hello, I'm Catherine Nicolato. I'm a member of the Frederick County Task Force on Aging. What does caregiving mean to you? Caregiving means caring for your loved one and for yourself. So the health and well-being of two people is at stake when caregivers do not self-identify. Not only am I on the task force on aging, I'm a daughter, parent, a grandparent, a human resources professional, and I am a caregiver. My mom, Catherine, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's more than 15 years ago. She was the anchor of our family, and she took good care of our family and my dad's parents. Since her diagnosis, things have changed drastically. At first, my dad, who was in his mid-70s at the time, was committed to keeping my mom at home. Two of my sisters and me, all of whom work outside the home, tried to give dad support with caregiving responsibilities for my mom, taking time away from work as often as possible to help with my mom's activities of daily living. This continued for almost five years until the disease progressed. Caring for my mom in our home became increasingly challenging and concerns for her safety grew. In January 2012, our lives changed forever. My mom was admitted as a resident to Egel Nursing and Rehabilitation Center in Lonaconing, Maryland. It was a painful day for my dad and the rest of the family. My dad, two sisters, and I keep vigil at the nursing home. After five years of nursing home care, my mom is now in late stage Alzheimer's. Daily, we are torn with balancing demanding work responsibilities and other personal and family responsibilities with our strong desire to spend as much time as possible comforting my mom and supporting my dad through this difficult time. And daily, we worry about taking time away from work and hoping this will not impact our jobs, our livelihood, while we are drawn to comforting my mom as she reaches the end of her life. Caregivers hope that employers will understand that full or part-time, on-site or long distance, caregiving is both physically and emotionally draining, and we're doing our best to juggle our work responsibilities with caregiving responsibilities, despite the physical and emotional toll. I am a caregiver with dual caregiving responsibilities. About a year and a half ago, my granddaughter Avery, who was six years old at the time, was diagnosed with a rare genetic lipid disease called homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia, or HOFH for short. Avery's cholesterol was over 800. Elevated cholesterol can be treated with statin drugs and unchecked can lead to buildup of plaque in the arteries, increasing the risk for stroke, heart disease, and heart attack. Since 2015, Avery has received an invasive and hopefully life-saving treatment called apheresis every other week at Nemours Alfred I. DuPont Hospital for Children in Wilmington, Delaware. The treatment involves continually removing Avery's blood from a vein through a port installed under her skin and running it through a machine that separates out the plasma, cleaning her blood of bad cholesterol. There is currently no cure for HOFH. Apheresis is one of a series of life-saving interventions to lessen the risk of stroke, heart attack, and early death. The treatments take an average of four hours. Here is where my role as caregiver comes into play. Avery, who is now eight years old, has two brothers, one in elementary school and the other in middle school. On Avery's treatment days, I leave work early to pick up her brothers from school and to care for them until my daughter returns from Wilmington, Delaware in the late evening. When I'm not helping my daughter with caregiving for her boys while Avery receives her apheresis, 
I am traveling to Western Maryland to support my dad and mom with caregiving activities. I share my story to encourage employers to recognize that caregiving is a growing challenge for employers. An estimated 43.5 million adults in the United States have provided unpaid care to an adult or a child in the prior 12 months in a June 2015 research report. Caregivers come from every age, gender, socioeconomic, and racial and ethnic group. We can share many heartfelt positive aspects of caregiving. We can also share many struggles and we face different challenges depending on our circumstances. It is important for employers to understand that caregivers may need different support depending on our loved one's condition and the needs and our own problems, strengths, and resources. Here are a few important facts for employers regarding caregiving. One, caregiving is here to stay. Employers must embrace caregiving as the new normal. Two, not everyone who is a caregiver does so for a living. Many people in the U.S., much like me, are long-term caregivers for family members, spending on average 20 hours weekly caring for loved ones. Three, start the conversation in your workplace. Four, demonstrate flexibility with caregivers. Five, connect employee caregivers to support resources. Six, access the best practices toolkit on React's website, respectcaregivers.org. The following presentation will leave you with important information to help you to better understand the impact of caregiving on businesses and finally to connect you with important resources right here in our community. The reality of caregivers in the workplace is here to stay. The good news is you're not in this alone. Employers and caregivers have a lifeline in our Frederick County community. It is called the Frederick County Department of Aging. Help is just a phone call away. Thanks for listening and enjoy the video. In a May 30, 2017 article in Forbes magazine, Denise Logland, a Next Avenue contributor, said, quote, there'll be an emphasis on human connection to counter the devastating health effects of social isolation on older people, end quote. If you have not already been faced with caregiving challenges, either personally or in the workplace, you certainly will. Another quote, demographically, we'll be facing hard realities in the next five to 10 years. We're going to have to become more comfortable with interdependence, end quote. In other words, with the aging of the baby boomer population, employers and employees will face growing challenges. One important challenge will be the need for caregiving and this will most certainly affect the workplace. How do we define the word caregiver? And what is the typical profile of a caregiver in the United States? A caregiver, sometimes called an informal caregiver, is an unpaid individual. For example, a spouse, partner, family member, friend or neighbor, involved in assisting others with activities of daily living and or medical tasks. But it is important to understand that caregivers can care for children with serious diseases as well. 48% of caregivers are age 18 to 49. 34% of caregivers are age 65 or more. Approximately five to seven million caregivers in the U.S. are long-distance caregivers. 
21% of caregivers live 26 or more miles from their care recipient. More often, the average caregiver is a woman, age 49, working outside the home. And this individual generally spends 20 or more hours per week providing unpaid care for a loved one or family member. Now let's talk about the cost of caregiving for employers and for workers. American businesses lose an estimated $34 billion annually in lost productivity from full-time working caregivers. Well, what does this look like in the workplace? There's the cost to replace employees. An employee with annual pay of $60,000 will cost the organization from $30,000 to $45,000 to hire and train a replacement. Then there are work distractions. There's the issue of absenteeism. Supervisory time away from their primary responsibilities. Employees' reduction in work hours, meaning full time employees requesting a reduction to part time status so that they may better juggle their work and caregiving responsibilities. So, what can you do as an employer to retain caregivers and to support employees in their dual responsibilities? First, it is important to understand that businesses that now take a holistic approach to managing employees, one that recognizes that employees are multidimensional, are more likely to attract and retain dedicated, high-performing employees. What does support for caregivers look like? Communication, two-way, open communication. Flexibility. It's less about seeing the employee in their seat every day and more about seeing results. Recognizing that some jobs demand that the employee be present at work. Workplace policies. Design your organization's employment policies in such a way to support and accommodate the need for flexibility for workers. Provide employee assistance program benefits. A work-based intervention program designed to identify and assist employees in resolving personal problems. For example, marital problems, financial problems, or emotional problems. Family issues, substance and alcohol abuse that may be adversely affecting the employee's performance. Consider elder care programs or provide employees with resources near your workplace that they can access. And take a strategic approach to employee benefit programs to help employees to balance their work and personal lives and their caregiving responsibilities. For instance, provide on-site wellness programs that focus on areas of vulnerability for caregivers such as resources and activities to control depression, informational webinars, and or activities to address stress. Here's what businessman Lee Iacocca has to say about caregiving. No matter what you've done for yourself or for humanity, if you can't look back on having given love and attention to your own family, what have you really accomplished? There were many faces of caregiving in the U.S. Let's take a look.
Here's a quick review of ways you can support employees in their caregiving responsibilities. And take a look at what employers are saying about the caregiving workforce. I want to leave you with some good news. You can be a lifeline for your caregiving employees. This is a win-win opportunity. The Frederick County Senior Services Division is your lifeline. You don't need to have all of the answers. Call the Frederick County Caregiver Support Program at 301-600-6001 for help with this business challenge. And you can also provide this information to employees who could benefit from the resources of the Caregiver Support Program. Thank you for taking time from your busy schedule to watch this executive briefing on caregiving.